Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Wife, 29 female, is leaving me, 29 male, for someone she has never met. I'm beginning to piece together how I became codependent and she has become quite narcissistic. Ah, here we go. Good day or evening, folks of Reddit. Apologize in advance for the long post. This is actually the short version. Background. My wife, 29 female, and I, 29 male, have been together for 11 years and married for three. We grew up in the same town and first met in elementary school. We became best friends in high school, strictly plutonic, and went to different universities two hours apart. Freshman year of college, we were surprised at how much we kept in contact. Long story short, we began dating that same year. The relationship started off very strong like most do. Distance was tough, but we would make it a point to spend nearly every weekend and holiday together. Things seemed amazing. Now looking back, I'm realizing all of the red flags throughout these 11 years. She is a go-getter. I am laid back and tend to go up to flawed. She has a short temper. I like to think of myself as very calm and collected. We shared the same values and dreamed about life after school. Post-undergrad, I took a full-time traveling job in order to gain some unique experience and make the most money, double is starting pay for my degree, while she entered a doctoral program. The distance continued, and we were seeing each other even less than before. Financially, I was able to cover both of our living, and we were able to afford trips on her holiday breaks. It was tough, but I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. Once she graduated, I could take a position in the city we chose, making less money, since we would then have combined incomes. She did not like this plan. She demanded that I move home with her because the distance was too tough and she wanted a real relationship. I obliged and took a 50% pay cut to work in the town she was attending school at. It was tough. Three months later, she's accepted into a different program in another state. I panicked. I was so frustrated that I had quit my high-paying job to be thrown into a new job that I will now have to quit and start over somewhere else. Luckily for me, I had good rapport with my previous company and we both agreed it would be best for me to travel again until she finishes the program of two and a half years. I actually received a significant pay increase from when I left, so things seemed to be working out. Not long after this, we got married. A beautiful dream wedding. I was able to afford all of the things she wanted due to my traveling job. She then started a business shortly after while she was still in school and it began to take off. I would give in an ultimatum. Quit my job, again, or divorce. She could take the distance anymore. Again, I obliged, and was fortunate my company let me take a part-time remote position, so it still had benefits for the both of us. I moved back, helped her with her business, doing more of the mundane tasks, and was working part-time, waiting for her to finish school. She ended up withdrawing from the program to focus on her business, and we moved back to our hometown. We were now both making money. Things seemed nice. We bought newer cars, bought an expensive home with room for future children. A house I was not comfortable with buying due to the price and how early we were in our careers. I fought against it and wanted to wait another year and was told I was dumb if I waited since we had the cash, so I gave in. Got two dogs. I only wanted the one, but she had to have another. Kept growing the business. She began to resent my help with the business. She was always full steam ahead. I was always asking her to slow down. Reason being, certain things take time and don't happen overnight. Examples, finding an office space, moving, hiring help, figuring out good business attorneys, good CPAs, etc. Within one year of moving back, we moved out of our spare bedroom and into an office space, hired an attorney, found a CPA, started payroll, moved the LLC from another state. But at the end of the day, I was constantly told, you are holding me back. You are too slow. You are business-minded. You do the work that anyone else could do. Hire people to do what you do. I worked hard, still maintaining a part-time position with my old company, staying up late processing orders for our business. I was discredited for my actions, always told I was not doing enough. I began to wear down physically and emotionally. She only wanted to focus on her business 24-7. but lost emotional connection. She wouldn't even walk the dogs with me anymore because she was working... I still did what I needed to do, but would not do any extra. I became slightly depressed. I began to resent her for always putting me down. I began to distance myself. Play more video games, play more sports, go to the gym more, be at the office more, or away from her. 
Over the past three months, we became very distant, and any conversation would trigger a fight. Generally related to business. She began spending more time in her bedroom on her phone in the evenings. I thought nothing of it as social media is the main source of advertisement for her business. It got to the point where I had enough and set up a marriage counseling. We went to one session, and it seemed good. That evening, the slob in the face occurred. She informed me that she is in love with a man that she met on social media two months ago. I was shocked. Couldn't believe it. How could she do this to me? Hide this from me. I probably shouldn't have, but I forgave her and told her that I was sorry for not being there emotionally for her and that we can continue counseling and work things out. That weekend was an emotional roller coaster. We were very intimate. Things seemed to be looking up. I was thinking maybe this is a good thing. A wake-up call for both of us. A reignition to our relationship. That following week, I had some sort of intuition that things were not adding up. I asked to see her phone and if she was still talking to the man. She said yes and showed me the messages. Hundreds and hundreds of messages a day. She confirmed they never met. I can gather that from the messages. I give her the ultimatum. Stop messaging him and tell him you are going to work on the relationship. She did that. This lasted 12 hours and she couldn't help herself. She started messaging him again and I knew this was a bigger problem than I had ever imagined. She then told me with a stone cold face that she wants a separation, that I would never be able to make her feel the way this person whom she has never met or spoken to on the phone with confirmed this through messages does and that she has finally found her true self. I was devastated. I did everything I possibly could, kept telling her to continue counseling with me, basically begging. She agreed to this and asked me to sleep in the guest bed. Every day and night she was on her phone giggling at her new boyfriend's messages in her house. I finally couldn't take it anymore. I told her to either stop or get a divorce. She chose divorce. She told me that the only reason she was just going to continue counseling for me because she was afraid if she left immediately, I would go kill myself. She told me my personality sucks, that I am not intellectual enough for her, and that all of the recent intimacy was her thinking about this other guy, not me. Just like that straight-faced. I felt betrayed, worthless, gross even. I tried to remain living in the same house, but could not take living with a ghost giggling all day and night to another man. I have now filed for divorce and I'm living at one of my parents. She did say she wanted to remain friends, but how could I? She had the gall to tell me I could continue to be part of the business through separation if I could handle it. But... If another man comes into her life and isn't comfortable with me working alongside her, then we would have to reassess at some point. So it begins. The process of splitting up the successful life we built together. We were on our way to be very well off. I am devastated, but tried to focus on myself. I'm aware of my mistakes in the relationship and I'm addressing them one by one. The last argument we had as I was leaving, she told me I am unhealthy and need help. I told her she needs to get help also. She'd fire back and said, I am fine. This is the true me. Hurts like hell. I miss the life I thought I had. Major red flags. 1. She would break things in fights and blame me for being the trigger in her doing so. 2. I was insecure for not wanting her to go on a mini vacation with another man. 3. Early on in the relationship, she broke up with me for one week and kissed another man, then we got back together. I swept it under the rug. 4. She always got her way. Where we lived. How we lived. Where we traveled. What we bought. 5. She did not do little kind gestures for years. I would always come home with her favorite drink or snack. Do things for her birthday or holidays. Did not receive any favors in return. 6. She began posting on social media like crazy. Seeing validation of things through internet friends. Consumed with her phone every waking hour. 7. Made fun of me during fights. My voice, my body type, too muscular, what the F? My goals, or lack thereof, my interest, how I dressed, I am slower than her, not as intellectual. 8. I never did enough for a business and was always holding her back. 9. If I tried talking to her where she was on her phone or computer, she would ignore me and say she is working or that she doesn't have the energy. 10. Even on dog walks, she would take her phone because she had to tend to direct messages from business. Those are just some of the many.
Stay strong, everyone, and don't let someone walk all over you like I did. Know your self-worth and always step back and look at things from a third-person perspective, though it can be tough at times. Thanks for taking the time to read. Our first response comes from, sometimes I am lost. Sorry it has happened to you. My heart goes out to you for healing and strength. You are right. No empathy. Narcissist, for sure. Say you were insecure for not wanting her to go on a vacation with another man? What the F? Her thought process is warped and sick. You would never be able to please her. No one will, to be honest. She has some serious issues. She is deflecting, saying it is you with the issues. Maybe you have some. But come on. Wants to be with someone she only knows via the internet? Finalize the D, and then let her buy you out in the business. You should not be around this toxic person. You have your whole life to live. Thankfully, no kids. So clean break. Don't live a good life. You are a much stronger and wiser person now. My gut says that once she comes out of her fog and starts to mature and understands how having someone in your life that supports you and does kind things, etc., she will come running back. Give her the straight arm and send her packing. Say no way. Next off from username 19611691. She told you who she is. A spoiled, narcissist shrew. Believe it. Let her become some other poor sap's problem. Ensure you get half of all assets. You're young. Take a job somewhere that interests you and pays well. If it's important to you, relocate to where your family lives. Be grateful that you don't have children tying you to this monster for the rest of your life. Seek counseling. Work out to deal with the physical stress of your situation. You will recover and come out of this stronger. Moving on. I, 33 female, saw my friends, 32 female, husband, 37 male, kissing another woman, 40-ish female. I took a different route to work because of the weather. I knew I was going to be late anyways, so I decided to take a less stressful, less trafficy, more scenic commute. I called my boss, letting her know I'd be late because of this crazy rain and thunderstorm, where we also have flash flood warnings. She told me to take my time, and if it was safe, and if I was stopping for coffee like I usually do, if I can grab her and one other manager coffee. I said of course, and just went to Starbucks, which I never do. I hadn't been in this area for a very long time because it's not the passage route. I realized that my friend's husband lived or worked in the apartment complex down the road, by about a mile. I'm sitting with my coffee and waiting for my boss and co-workers' coffees. I look up, and I see a guy who looks like him from behind, rubbing the back of this woman next to him. Then, he turned to walk to a table, and I see this definitely her husband. I immediately turn my body and act like I'm on my phone. We've actually never really clicked. I've always gotten bad vibes. We are Facebook friends, but he's never really on. So I'm freaking out, not sure what to do. If maybe he won't recognize me and isn't paying attention, or if I should actually make him recognize me. I'm incredibly angry and somewhat in shock. I hadn't seen a kiss or anything just yet. I decided to make my presence known, and walked over to my drink order slowly, seeing if I'll catch eye contact. Then I see them making out. When I got back to my seat, they had stopped and I just stared, because I was so pissed. He looked at me and recognized me immediately. His face went totally red, and he may have said under his breath a curse word, but he definitely said my name to her, and she immediately looked embarrassed and guilty. I saw he was leaving their table, so I already was leaving with my drinks, and I beat him to my car. He waved me down, looking quite panicked, possibly wanted to ask me not to say anything to my best friend. They have been married for three and a half years, Together even longer. I've been her best friend since we were 13. I drove to work, and out of instinct I called her and left a message to call me as soon as she can. She's in Canada for work all week. He messaged me on Facebook with this long, absurd reasoning to how and why this happened, and he begged me to let him be the one to tell her. Should I let him tell her, or should I? I think if I were in her shoes, if my friend experienced this and knew and told me my husband begged her to let him tell me, I'd want to hear it from my friend first, only because sometimes getting the most devastating news can come better from a close friend than you trust and feel comfort with. I'd also feel less caught off guard, but I just want what is best for her. What do you think? Update. Thanks so much for the advice and concern. It has helped me feel a little less crazed and more in control. So her and I are both still at work. We both have jobs where we move around a lot and can't use our phones a lot because we don't have time. So far, 
She told me that he has blown up her phone with texts and calls, thankfully not saying anything about the situation too in depth, but he did say, and this infuriates me, we need to talk because I'm afraid you're going to hear something that isn't completely true or how she will make it sound. My friend said she's going to put her phone away and not check it until she can talk to me, which makes me breathe easier. I asked her if she wanted me to send screenshots of his message and our short back and forth, which makes him look guilty times a thousand. She didn't want to see it while at work because she's anxious enough already. She thanked me and said she will call me as soon as she's back at her hotel. I'll still be at work, but if she wants me to tell her over the phone, I will. She said she ventures a guess of infidelity, but doesn't want me to say anything until we can officially just talk over the phone. Update 2. We FaceTimed. I told her I needed to speak with her and I asked her what she wanted. I said the last thing I wanted to do was upset her while she's out of town and I'm not there. She said he's called all day, left voicemails and texts, that she's ignored. She told me to tell her what the situation is, and that she'd rather know before she answers him. She could tell I was devastated, and she told me to tell her. I told her exactly what I saw. She cried, and then immediately read his texts to me, and listened to his voicemails while I was on the phone. She said she did want to see what he messaged me. I sent it. She said he's full of crap, and she feared this happening for so long. I asked her what she needed from me because I'm going to be there for her, and she asked me to stay on FaceTime with her for a while. She called him, and he was apparently in a desperate begging type situation. He was telling her what he messaged me, but of course making even more excuses. Trying to claim he felt no good enough for her, and felt she didn't love him the way he loves her. She told him they'd discuss it when she gets back, and blocked him. I'm really proud of her because she's a very sensitive person. Her co-worker is with her now, and they're down in the hotel lounge. She's going to call me before she goes to sleep. She asked me to basically be available this week to chat before she gets home, which of course I'm going to do. She mentioned she wants to discuss his operation, but I made him feel she may work it out so he doesn't pull anything crazy. I felt that was smart. Thanks for your advice and investment. She's a really good person and she deserves so much more. Our first response comes from Keyboard and Bill. Tell her and forward her the message he sent you. B.O.P. responds, That's what I was thinking, but I feel so awful. That her seeing that is going to make it even more painful. But I guess getting it all over with in one sitting is best. So she can feel it. But also then figure out how she wants to proceed. I'll probably tell her when I'm with her that I have this message and she can read it with me there. Next off from Nekawai19. Tell her as soon as possible. He can and will lie to her or make up a story where you are the bad guy. Tell. Her. Now. Dow Loco 6913 chimes in. No, you tell her. He will lie and gaslight as well as get the chance to paint you in a bad light so she will be reluctant to believe you. You can go and beg the shop to show her just a snippet of them kissing on their cameras, but they will probably not allow it. Next thought from Mongoose Loud. As an aside, the fact that he was bold enough to be rubbing on and kissing a woman not his wife and a local popular coffee shop is noteworthy. You hear about people subconsciously wanting to get caught. George Old 20 c says, Your friend's husband would tell a lie. He might be even telling her that you're going to make up some kind of fake story to get him in trouble. You should tell her what you saw. Good luck. One more comment from Significant Jello 35 Tell your friend and send her screenshots of his message to you. Get to her before he does. Else, you will have enough hell tasks to get her to believe you. To which the OP replies, I'm going to call her in a bit. I'm at work and she's at work and not able to be near her phone for a while. But I told her I need to talk to her about something. And that it's very important and also important she talk to me first. I feel awful. She says she's guessing what it is. And she'll talk to me before him. Thank God. On to the next story. So before the girlfriend heads out to work, I found out she has a crush on a male co-worker. This is weird. I'm not too sure what's going on. What I know is that when I confronted her about her crush, she seemed far more apologetic than necessary. I told her to get the F out of my sight. Then I want to take a nap since I've been working all night. I wake up and find out that she had never gone to work. She tarts by saying that she's looking for a new job. Then, she starts crying and undressing me and offering me oral. We have sex a few times, but I think there's something weird about this picture. 
she basically volunteered to all sorts of sex fantasies, was far more apologetic than the situation seemed to warrant. I don't know, I'm thinking I stumbled on more than a work colleague crush here. I don't usually do long-term relationships, and I'm kind of getting a bit worried about this one. If anyone has any advice, I'd greatly appreciate it. Ask for advice and you're gonna get it. First up from Riley Weiss. Your intuition is justifiable, considering you have uncumbered some type of inappropriate relationship. It's fair, on your part, to suspect cheating. I want to be fragile about this because I understand the fragility of being in a long-term relationship. I would stop the sex for right now. Give yourself the space and time you need to think about what's going on. If she does respect that or persuades you with sex or manipulation to stay, that's emotional abuse. People in this thread glorifying sex is garbage, and that's not a healthy mindset. You are upset, rightly so. This type of conflict is damaging. I would take a step back and assess the situation. You need a clear mind that's not being bombarded with emotional vomit. After you have had time to clear your head and think, give her the opportunity to come clean. You know her, which means you will know she's open about the entire relationship, or if she's concealing information. The ball is in your court. Be civil and respectful. That's the best way to respectfully get revenge on someone's disloyalty. Next bit of advice from Numerous Cow 47 She had sex with the other guy and she's trying to make it up to you right now. The OP replies, you may be right. Can you tell me what makes you think so? The deleted account replied, no girl in her right mind will do this because of a simple crush. Try to push the truth out of her and see where it leads you. The next intense thought from Lopsided Collar 7164. If it was just a crush, she would have fought with you. She would have told you that a crush is nothing and you are overreacting. Everyone has a crush and even you have found other people attractable being with her. Yet, she didn't defend herself. Her response was a bit irrational. She cried, which tells me that her guilt is due to something greater than a crush. Then, she's offering her sexually to you like some sort of reverse reclaiming sex or hysterical bonding. Also, try to indulge so many fantasies in one small window of time lets me know that she indulged some fantasies herself without you and as repentance, she wanted to give you what she most likely already tried so that you get what she got to reduce the guilt. I bet she had new tricks in bed that she learned from the coworker. Getting a new job means nothing as far as ending communication or shutting off feelings. Not in an age of social media. The relationship can carry on, even if she were to make a show of blocking him on social media. Blocking is a click of a button, and so is unblocking. She could spend her days unblocking and blocking, deleting message threads, and hiding proof in locked folders, just to keep you in the dark as she invests further into this affair emotionally and her feelings for you slowly die, keeping you in limbo until her feelings for him grow too intense as she decides to leave you. Meanwhile, you can ask for her location to be turned on, but she could leave her phone at home and cheat. Plus, you do not know if she will meet up with him or invite him over while you're at work and claim to be sleeping as she's looking for new jobs. Trust your instincts, but also read her reaction. This level of guilt for a crush is not normal. Crushes are common. Her reaction isn't, unless she has deep regrets over something more and fears losing you before she's ready to comb to her feelings. If you wanted more evidence, okay, but know that she probably deleted it the moment after he confronted her, and his guy may lie when confronted because he may also have a girlfriend, wife, family to lose. Last thought from Roseboy7678. She has done a bit more than just have a crush. There is no other reason she went overboard than trying to assuage her guilt for cheating.